Peace of the Lord be with you, and good uh, evening. This is our devotion for Tuesday, uh, February 14th, so St. Valentine's Day. Um, and I will be getting this out in the evening. And so we'll follow the evening or early evening order, page 297 in the hymnal. And this coming weekend, it's the, the last Sunday before Lent. Next Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, so this is the last Sunday before Lent. So we will... Um, We've been reading about the Transfiguration, and uh, so that's in Matthew chapter 17, and uh, it's verses 1 through 9 is the reading for Sunday, and, um, and we'll, we'll pick up from there. So, uh, we'll begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ. We have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the, the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking, when behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And when the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. Let us pray. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ, in your blessed transfiguration, we see your manifestation of your glory, uh, that you show yourself as God in the flesh in the, um, in the purest way possible. And we thank you that you entered into this world with all of your majesty and all your glory, and that you entered into this world in that glory to take away our sin, that you would carry all of our sin to the cross in the glory that is your love. And we pray that as we hear of your transfiguration and as we prepare our, our hearts for the season of Lent, that you would bless us with repentant hearts, looking forward to, um, to the joy of, uh, of, of Easter, looking forward to the, the um, remembrance of your death for us, because of the great joy that is ours as you, as you have been raised from that death to live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So as we have, as we have the transfiguration this Sunday, um, this is, you know, such a, such a big, uh, big day in, the, in, the, in the, the year of the church where we have Jesus, as I said, manifesting his glory. He, he, you know, this is the, you have the, the epiphany at the, the, excuse me, you have the transfiguration at the, the end of the season of, of epiphany, the, the peak of the season of, of Epiphany, and you have in that Jesus manifesting himself, uh, which is what Epiphany means, manifestation, manifesting himself as God uh, in, in, in this most glorious way possible, shining with that glory of God. And, and um, it doesn't, doesn't say it here, but in, in Luke it even makes the point that as, uh, as Jesus is talking to Moses and Elijah, he's talking about his exodus, right, the, his, his path, his way, his way out, uh, which is the, the way to, to the cross. And, and you know, that's it, as glorious as it is seeing, um, seeing Jesus in, in this manifestation. Uh, it really comes down to that glory being carried to the cross and the glory of the cross and God's love for us. You know, in the Gospel of John, it's all about Jesus being lifted up. And where is he lifted up? He's lifted up on the cross for our sins, right? That, that glory there. So in any case, as we have Matthew, so let's look, let's look at Matthew as Matthew uh, in, the, in this case. Um, so after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by, himself, by themselves. And uh, if you were, would compare this to Luke, which is, is where you have uh, the other, uh, well, yeah, I guess you have, you have it in Mark as well. But, uh, but in Luke, you have another account of the, the, the transfiguration. He says after eight days. And this is, you know, a, um, could be a differentiation how you count the days. You can count them as, you know, um, six days and six nights. Uh, you can count them, you know, in various ways. Um, Matthew chooses to say after six days. Uh, and it's six days after, or after six days after, um, you have 
Jesus saying in verse 28 of, verse, of chapter 16, Truly I say to you, there are some standing here will not, who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Right? That's, that's pointing to this, this transfiguration. There's also an interesting connection that we'll come to with the Old Testament lesson where it talks about this being on the sixth day and then the seventh day that Moses goes up with the elders and then they feast with God up there. There's not a, not a feast here explicitly, but some connections, especially as the, the cloud of God's presence uh, shows itself there. So anyway, uh, they go up in the mountain. Jesus is transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. I always say, can you imagine what Peter and James and John experienced? We'll talk more about that tomorrow, but the, that, that experience of seeing Jesus shine like the sun. And behold, there appeared with them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Uh, Moses, uh, I, I think that it's fair to say, representing the law, the Torah, and Elijah representing the prophets. This is the whole of the Old Testament. You have all of the Old Testament leading up to Jesus here. And then, and, and Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. The word for tents there, skenes, is, is the word for the tabernacle. I'll make three tabernacles. I, th I think Peter's saying like three temples. We're going to worship here. And you've got the temple in Jerusalem. This isn't in Jerusalem. We're going to we're going to worship here. This is where the presence is. Right. This is where the glory of God is. The the glory was understood to be over the ark and the holy of holies at the temple, but no, it's here. Um, and uh, I always I always appreciate Peter's. Uh, I often say bumbling there, right? What else you say? Uh, oh God, it's good that we're here. You know, I I I, I can appreciate that. Uh, I think we all we often do that, um, kind of in, in awe and not knowing what else to say. Peter always the one that kind of jumps in with something to say. Uh, Jesus was still speaking with Moses and Elijah when behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Cloud indicating the presence of God. I mentioned the cloud in Exodus 24. We'll, we'll talk about that again. You see Jesus taken up in the cloud in his ascension. And, and you see the cloud of the glory of God in the, in the going into, into the Holy of Holies uh, at the tabernacle in Exodus uh, was it 38 or 40 when the, when the tabernacle uh, is initiated. And you have the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night, right? And leaving them in the wilderness. This is God's presence with them. And a voice from the cloud saying, this is my beloved son. So God's there saying, this is my son bearing testimony. Same testimony as was born at the baptism. Uh, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. Listen to his word. Listen to what he says. Listen to what he, he does. Listen to who he is, right? And the disciples heard this, and they fell on their faces and were terrified. That's what you do when you're in the presence of God. You reverence it. You fall on your face. You can't help it. This is God, and, and you're not, right? So this is what they do. And then in that fear, they, they bow down, but then, then it goes away. And Jesus comes, and he touches them, and he absolves them. Rise and have no fear. Yes, you are in the presence of God, but your sin is forgiven, but you need not fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And... Uh, and as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. And as we have that, always that, uh, that what we call the messianic secret, why is he waiting? And, and uh, you know, this is understood to be because, uh, because Jesus was going to be a Messiah in a way that was different than people were expecting the Messiah. So when he was raised from the dead, then it would all make sense that this is the God who came into the flesh to bear our sin on the cross and to be raised, that we would have the forgiveness of sins and eternal life, and we would live in his eternal kingdom, where that we would see the messianic fulfillment free from all earthly burden, suffering, um, ruled by any uh, government that, that, would, that would oppress us. You know, the, 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 the uh, Jewish people lived under, under the, the, the Roman government at that point, and they would be free from that, and we would be free ourselves to live in the kingdom of God freely. And um, we look forward to that day and the joy of the God who has carried our sins to the cross in his body and has been raised that we would have life in him. Amen. We continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, I do that so many times on Mondays. 
continuing with the concluding prayer. Lord Jesus, stay with us for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken our hope, awaken hope among us that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.